Hey guys, uh, today's presentation is going to have a look at a few different physiological strategies to enhance recovery. So um, first of all, we're going to have a look at sleep and rest, uh, followed by hydrotherapy, which is using water, uh, compression garments, massage, and finishing off with the hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So um, it's pretty obviously, sorry, pretty obvious when we don't get enough sleep and rest, we're not um, going to perform to our best. Um, it's recommended that we get between seven and nine um, hours of sleep each night. Obviously, there are some variations to that, but most of us need about that much. And it's essential after intense training um, that we have enough sleep so we can repair physiologically and psychologically. Um, and basically, if we don't have enough sleep um, and it can, pair, it can impair things like uh, reaction time, um, agility, speed, visual processing, um, concentration, um, decision making, that sort of thing. So if someone's not had a good night's sleep or they've had several nights of um, um, unrestful sleep, um, they won't be able to uh, perform as well as someone who has had plenty of sleep. So basically, if you do get enough sleep and rest, um, it allows for growth and rejuvenation of the immune, nervous, muscular and skeletal systems. Um, it allows the body to maintain optimal levels of cortisol, which is a hormone uh, which minimizes the likelihood of irritability. Um, it promotes optimal alertness and concentration, so like I mentioned before, and it also maintains your mental, emotional and physical health. So hydrotherapy, there's a few different forms. Um, so we'll have a look at pool or beach sessions first. Often on the news you see the footy players standing in the water at the beach and you think, what on earth are they doing? Um, and basically this technique involves just general immersion in water. It doesn't have to be the beach, um, but if that's handy and it's free, then why not? Um, and basically the concept is that the water will sort of put a gentle pressure on the muscles and the tissues and basically create a compression effect. Um, this has the ability to reduce muscle edema, which is um, a localized swelling, and um, the edema can often reduce oxygen delivery to those areas um, by pressing on nearby capillaries. So to try and reduce that swelling, um, a gentle compression is best offered by the water. Um, it can also help increase blood flow. Um, and therefore, with the blood, you get more oxygen and nutrients to the working sites and also a greater removal of waste products. Um, a different form of hydrotherapy, which is cryotherapy. Um, it sounds a bit space age, but basically it means just the application of hot ice or um, cold water. So this is a case of where you might have seen athletes inside ice baths or um, big wheelie bins with ice water in there. Um, and Basically, the whole point of this is to reduce inflammation, um, reduces the blood flow via vasoconstriction, so it narrows the blood vessels. Um, and it also helps with, if um, athletes are overheated, it can help with their um, core temperature, reducing their core temperature. Um, and it can also help uh, decrease um, pain. It can also uh, psychologically help um, with sort of the perception of recovery. So, you know, doing something is better than nothing sort of idea. Um, it can also decrease metabolic activity um, and therefore it it's, uh, sort of prevents tissue breakdown or slows it down, um, can decrease uh, a high heart rate, um, and it can also reduce the symptoms of DOMS, which is the delayed onset of muscle soreness, which is, you know, getting the sore muscles the next day after um, doing some intense exercise. All right, so the second last uh, hydrotherapy is hot water immersion. Um, this is otherwise known as thermotherapy. So basically um, you're immersing yourself in warm to hot water, um, but it's recommended that it's not done immediately after an event, uh, particularly if the athlete has any new soft tissue injuries because you don't want to promote blood flow to those areas because it will make the swelling worse. Uh, you want to reduce blood flow. So. Um, the idea of this is that it sort of it follows the cryotherapy or the, the cold water immersion um, about 72 hours later. And an example of this could be bathing in mineral spas or heated pools. And the idea is, is to promote circulation uh, because with the heat it opens up the blood vessels so it increases um, vasodilation and therefore it will increase the supply of oxygen and nutrients to the muscles. 
Um, it helps um, clear metabolites, so the effects of metabolism. Um, it enhances muscle elasticity, reduces stiffness and muscle soreness. Um, again, it's the, there's a possibility that it will re reduce the uh, onset of DOMS. And it can also reduce the incidence of muscle spasms. So um, generally it um, heats up the muscles and um, increases blood flow and um, sort of improves um, muscles if there's no other soft tissue injuries there. All right, last hydrotherapy is uh, the contrast water therapy. So this is basically switching between hot and cold. Um, so the idea is you can use a spa or a shower or a combination or whatever. Generally, if you're using a spa because it's more intense, um, you have two to four minutes in the hot water and then um, 30, to sec 30 to 60 seconds in cold water. So maybe a cold plunge pool, for example. And you would repeat that about four or five times. Um, if you're using a shower, it's a little bit different. You could use 30 to 60 seconds in warm to hot water, then jump into the cold shower or just run the tap cold um, for another 30 to 60 seconds. So about a minute of each. You can do this four to five times also. Um, and basically what happens is when there's the cold and then the hot, it's making the blood vessels switch from vasoconstriction to vasodilation and back again. So that opening and closing of the blood vessels is in effect causing a pump, which then um, promotes uh, rapid blood flow. And that um, will definitely help improve the clearance of waste products. It helps oxygen delivery, reduces muscle stiffness, uh, reduces inflammation. It can help you increase your muscle elasticity and again, range of motion. Um, and also it can decrease post-exercise uh, blood lactate levels. Um, so basically, again, because there's the heat in there, you don't want to do it immediately after receiving a, hot, a soft tissue injury. Um, you want to do this a little bit later on to sort of promote recovery um, a couple of days after. All right, compression just comes in the form of either um, compression garments, so clothing such as um, 2XU or skins, and also it can come in the form of bandages and taping. And basically um, the garments are body molded garments. They're, they're designed to provide mild compression um, and also the bandages and taping, I mean, they're not supposed to be wrapped so tight that you know it's gonna make your leg fall off. It's supposed to be there just to provide mild compression and this helps improve circulation. And so um, it helps also decrease swelling and inflammation because it draws the circulation away from those areas, uh, reduces muscle soreness, increases venous return, um, enhances removal of waste products. Um, and it also helps deliver oxygen to the muscles and improves temp temperature regulation and also helps uh, force it also improves, sorry, force production uh, following fatigue. So because it's improving the state of the muscle, it allows you to recover better and produce more force. All right, massage is the, manip the manipulation of soft tissue through applying pressure. There's a few different types of massage. Um, with sport, there is a difference between a deep tissue massage and a relaxation massage. Relaxation massage is basically a surface massage. It's designed to make you feel nice, um, sort of manipulates the muscles a little bit just to relieve tension, um, but it's not there to um, aid in recovery in any such way. Whereas you have a remedial massage and deep tissue massage, they are um, a lot more intense. Often the athlete will uh, walk away from those massage sessions sore than that what they went in, um, but the idea of the, the massage is to help uh, loosen up the muscle fibers and to promote recovery. So um, just in general, massage will improve well-being because it's obviously a psychological release. There's not too many people who don't enjoy a good massage. It offers pain release, um, enhances relaxation, reduces anxiety. Um, there's just some sort of psychological link between muscle manipulation and relaxation. Um, it also temporarily decreases heart rate and blood pressure um, because of that relaxed state. Um, it can in increase muscle temperature, it will depend on the type of massage, um, and it can reduce muscle tension. Okay, the last one we've got is hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So this is when athletes will use a chamber that is filled with 100% oxygen 
um, and it's under an increased atmospheric pressure. So it's almost like the chamber forces the oxygen into the athlete's lungs and therefore into their system. Um, and the idea is, although there's, there's limited evidence, the idea is that it um, improves recovery because of the intense amount of oxygen reaching the muscles. So um, it has claims to in, improve endurance, uh, remove waste products, um, offer relaxation, um, heighten concentration, alertness and memory because obviously the oxygen goes to the brain as well. Your brain needs a lot of oxygen to work. Um, reduces altitude discomfort and jet lag. So if you have been, um, say for example, at sea level and then you've had to move up to um, above sea level by quite, like, I don't know, a thousand meters or whatever, um, then using hyperbaric oxygen therapy will help aid in that transition. Um, it can reduce fatigue and it can also lessen muscle stiffness. So just in summary, um, there's a few different physiological strategies that athletes can employ. Um, some work better than others, depending on the type of athlete and the type of sport. Obviously, you've got sleep and rest, the hydrotherapy, so um, the four different types, pool and beach, uh, cryotherapy, which is the cold, um, the thermotherapy, which is the hot water immersion, and then the contrast water therapy, which is the hot and cold together. Um, and then you've got the compression garments to help aid in circulation. Um, massage and also hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Okay, thanks for watching.